Peter Behrens' AEG turbine factory is a remarkable transcription of Gottfried Zimper's theory of the primitive hut into a monumental contemporary building. Like Zimper, Baron starts with what is really a kind of social but also technological device that is at the heart of the architectural program. Where Zimper started with fire, Baron starts with the turbine engine itself, this giant steam turbine which would become the central source, the primary source of power. That turbine has to be contained, has to be housed. Like Zimper, he starts with the base. It's a remarkably high base that runs around the entire building. You can see the scale of this, both the base and the overall building, by looking at these figures in the foreground relative to that concrete pad or that concrete base. On this giant masonry base, Behrens then constructs a tectonic system made of steel, a system of arches, 28 altogether, that span an area of 25 by 130 meters. And the arches rise up, again, according to Zimper's dictum, constructing a skeleton that holds up the walls and the roof together. Now this is different from a stone system or a trabeated system uh, where column and beam are understood as separate elements. Behrens has constructed a tectonic system that's a kind of singular uh, net of small metal systems welded or bolted together. However, he deviates from Zimper in an important way. At the very top edge of the factory, of the building, just before it springs into its roof, Behrens added a very heavy steel girder that goes the entire length of the building. Now that girder is brought out from the glass wall of the building and thereby creates a very heavy shadow. The heavy shadow, together with the depth of the beam, makes the beam seem much uh, much heavier, denser, and deeper than it actually is. Now, there's a big distinction between a tectonic system in Zimper's term, which is a system made up of separate elements joined together that work together in its kind of tensile net. There's a difference between that and a trabeated system, which is a system of columns and beams understood as separate and, and load-bearing uh, through compression. What Behrens has done is use a tectonic system, according to Zimper's theory, and yet he's made it appear like a trabeated system because it's the trabeated system that has the corporeality and the, density, the visual density that he thinks is required for this monumental building. Behrens thought that the trabeated system or the appearance of the trabeation would resonate with classical architecture more than a, than a tensile system. A tensile system would appear too, too flimsy, too lightweight. So he's getting the power of a trabeated colonnade, which resonates with the Greek temple itself, but he's building that now out of steel and glass. Baron's second focus was where this tectonic system springs from the base. It springs from the base in this giant hinge. Behrens focused a lot of his aesthetic compositional attention on that hinge. The hinge is raised on the base. It's almost as if it's a piece of sculpture on a podium. The base comes almost to eye level. It's almost exactly at eye level. So this giant hinge confronts you and the visual power of this metal hinge is almost like an analog of the turbines inside. Finally, on this long facade, is the glass. Remember that Zimper's theory is that the, the membrane, the wrapper, would come from an idea of weaving. This is where Behrens has used these enormous planes of glass, and they're actually tilted slightly away from the base, tilted inward toward the building. Part of this tilt then gives this visual weight to the column and the beam, but also it puts the glass plane on display as a plane. But the panes of glass here are very, very small, and the mullions are very small, but they're very closely spaced. 
the effect is that it looks like a weaving of glass and steel, according to Zimper's dictum. It has a, it, it's brittle. It has a, it has a tactility to it. It has a, it has a kind of brittleness to the plane, which, which also, uh, is, that tactility emphasizes, again, the visual power of the glass. As we move now to the front of the building, we, we see a slightly different uh, aesthetic at, at work. First of all, it's at the front of the building that we see the contours of this giant barrel roof, or actually a kind of segmented barrel roof. Now, that roof has a lot of volume. That volume is not needed functionally. There's, that volume is not used by any of the equipment of the factory. It's simply that Barons wanted that contour, that silhouette, seen against the sky to convey this sort of representational power of the building. It's, it's like a frontispiece. It's like a temple front. Structurally, it works slightly differently. We have these giant concrete piers now that at first gloss are bearing the weight of this big sort of barrel roof. But in contrast to that, these giant concrete piers are set back from the edge of the roof so that even though at first gloss they appear to be load-bearing, at second gloss, it almost looks as if the glass front itself is bearing the weight. And it's that contradiction or that dialectic or that tension that gives the kind of visual power of this facade. Once again, it's this tactile, haptic plane of glass, a, a kind of plane that you that you almost touch with your eyes, as it were. You, it has a tactility, uh, a visual tactility, um, that really makes the glass as material important, almost more important structurally or visually load-bearing uh, than the, the, the concrete piers themselves. Translating Zimper's theory into an architecture of steel, glass, and concrete Behrens is able to bring the building of the industrial factory into the realm of architecture, capital A, and even to compare the factory building with the monumental tradition that begins with the Greek temple.